Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss how you can create a planogram and a floor plan for your final group project. In both lessons 3 and lesson 4 you have been provided with templates that will help you put together a visual merchandising floor plan and a successful planogram. In all successful merchandising you always have to think about the well thought out space plan. So what exactly is a visual merchandising floor plan? So floor plans are basically scale drawings that show the relationship between different rooms, different spaces and physical features that are viewed from above. They basically help provide and visualize how people will move through the space. Floor plans really make it easy to check and see if the space is suitable for the intended purpose, to work through any potential challenges and to redesign before moving forward um, into a more elaborate planning and building. Here's a pretty good example. When designing a merchandising floor plan, you need to make sure that you are taking into account the type of customer that is visiting your store and the merchandise that you're wanting to sell to maximize sales. The goal of the floor plan is to achieve proper placement of displays, products, registers, which in turn will result in more space and longer customer shopping time. A well-planned retail layout will allow the retailer to maximize the sales for each square foot of their allocated selling space. This can be done by featuring merchandise in an efficient way that encourages customers to basically consider making additional purchases while they're browsing. The store layout will generally show the size and the location of each department and any permanent structures, fixture locations as well as customer traffic patterns. An efficient floor plan is the perfect balance of ultimate customer experience and maximize revenue per square foot. It is really important to commit to the customer experience when designing a floor plan. Retailers who deliver on the experience usually have higher revenues, even if the square footage is comparatively small. Even though the textbook doesn't really discuss too much about floor plans, I think it's really important for us to distinguish between the different types of floor plans that exist out there. The first type of floor plan is called a straight floor plan. This floor plan is most generally used due to the economic nature. It really helps make use of the walls and the fixtures to create a small space within the retail store. The downside of this plan is that um, it has side lines in the stores and depending on the front entrance, it may be difficult for customers to see the variety of the merchandise. It's pretty simple, but therefore economic in nature. The second type of floor plan is called a diagonal floor plan. This type of floor plan is really good for store layout, for self-service type of merchandise and retail locations that serve that. It really does help offer the visibility for cashiers and customers. This type of floor plan, diagonal floor plan, invites movement and traffic flow into the retail location. This plan is more customer friendly. Unlike the straight plan, which can feel more like a maze, the diagonal floor plan offers the customers more of an open traffic pattern. The third type of floor plan is usually called an angular floor plan. And this type of floor plan is usually ideal for high-end specialty stores. The curves and the angles of the fixtures in the walls help to make a more expensive store design. However, the soft angles create better traffic flow throughout the retail store. This design usually has the lowest amount of available display space, so it's best for specialty stores who display um, edited inventories versus large selections. The fourth type of floor plan is called a geometric floor plan, and this one is usually very suitable for um, store design that have and that carry athletic clothing as well as different kind of um, performance wear. It usually uses racks and fixtures to create an interesting and out of the ordinary type of store design without high cost. This type of plan usually makes a statement about the products um, that the store really sells to the customers and what kind of customers they want to attract. So it really helps to make a statement that speaks to the messages that you want to associate with your brand. The last version, as you might have guessed, is called the mixed floor plan. This type of floor plan is usually the most frequently used when it comes to this particular group project. The mixed floor plan incorporates the straight, the diagonal, the angular floor plans in order to create a more functional store design. The layout usually moves traffic towards the walls in the back of the store. It really can be a solid layout for most any type of retailer. Some of the most admired examples of customer experience can be attributed to stores that have multiple shapes, different evaluations, as well as designs. This type of floor plan really can appeal to an array of customers. Please remember that in order to create your floor plan, you have to use the materials that are provided in class. Please note that you're not allowed to distribute any course material for personal or profitable use. 
As always, please remember that the focus of this particular assignment is to arrange the fixtures and the merchandise um, in order to achieve maximum efficiency and effect of the customer. Please be careful how you use every single fixture that is provided in the template that I have for you guys, because every single fixture will look differently. For instance, an etrage is a one-sided type of fixture, and so therefore it should be put against the wall, otherwise it will look pretty odd in the middle of the floor plan. It is recommended that all provided fixtures have to be altered to their basic appearance, for example in the colors and the patterns and other visual merchandising materials and graphics, so that you can really help illustrate the idea um, and sell the merchandise to your specific retailer. As you can notice, I have provided two different artboards for you. The first artboard will have a sample of the most frequently used um, floor plan and merchandising fixtures. Things like cashiers and tables and mannequin stands, um, shelf units, round racks, windows, doors, window displays, um, and etc. In the second portion, I have provided you with a space where you can go ahead and start working on your floor plan. At the bottom, I have a section for you to write your concept statement, which is really important, to also add your visual merchandising fixtures. Something similar to how I have provided the visual as well as the name in your artboard number one. And then last but not least, your team member names. Please make sure that this is a group project so everybody has to collaborate and work efficiently and well together. Once you and your team members have established a basic plan of how you would like to go about your floor plan, you can go ahead and start working. For example, I'm going to go ahead and create two window displays for this particular store. Control C, Control V or edit copy, edit paste to paste two different window displays. Please make sure to use the zoom tool and pay attention to the details. This black line right here represents concrete. Next, I would like to add a door or perhaps a double door. As you can see, sometimes the fixtures are not going to look even. It might require you to use your selection tool or direct selection tool to manipulate the shapes. I'm going to go ahead and increase the shape of this door. I'm going to go ahead and get started by creating the center piece first. You can go ahead and ungroup every single one of the objects by right clicking and clicking on ungroup and either manipulating each shape. I can go ahead and hold shift to retain the proportions and manipulate the shape or perhaps I would like to delete certain sections. You can also change the color by clicking right here on your control panel menu or from your swatches section and change the color. Please note that you can also change not only the color but you can also change the basic line. For example, I would like to add a wood feature. I can do that by scrolling down or perhaps by accessing my libraries right here. I have selected a wood centerpiece. I think it might be a little bit wide, so therefore I'm going to use the uh, stroke weight to lower the weight. As soon as you and your team members have worked together to align all of the fixtures that are necessary to include in this floor plan, it's always important to remember and see if you have a good balance in your floor plan as well as if you have a good proportion. For example, even though you have a lot of information and content right here, it is possible that at times you're not going to find what you're looking for. If there is a fixture that is not available for you here, you're welcome to create it yourself. For example, I would like to create a counter that has that wood feature. Instead of using color, I'm going to go ahead and change the line to mahogany and keep the fixtures consistent throughout my floor plan. As soon as you and your team members have been able to establish a really good floor plan that has flow, accessibility, balance, is well organized and is proportionate, you can go ahead and start working on your floor plan, concept statement, as well as your visual merchandising fixtures. It should look something like this. One last thing I would like to show you is how you can apply flooring like this. I'm gonna go back to your floor plan and as you can see the flooring is locked. I would recommend that you add the flooring only after you have finished and completed the entire floor plan. At that point, you can make your way to the layers and from this drop down menu right here where it says preloaded layers, please find the area that is locked. Go ahead and click on the locked button and this will now allow you to select a floor plan. In order to add a floor plan that fits the visual and the aesthetic image of your retail store, you're going to have to find a sample floor plan. To do that, you're going to go ahead and open Google, type in the type of flooring you would like to search. From the tools menu, 
go ahead and make sure that you select label for reuse. Even though this particular floor plan is not going to be for profit, it's always safe to make sure that the images we find are going to be available um, and properly protected. Try to find a flooring image that has a top view. This is a really good example because I can see that the image itself is not very small. Therefore, it will be good in quality. I'm going to go ahead and right click, save image as. I'm going to make my way back to Illustrator. Click on file, place, find the image. Make sure that none of these are being checked and click place. You can draw a bounding box and place the image or simply click and release. At this point, you might have to try a few times to see what kind of a flooring size you will get based on the image you selected. You may have to size it up or size it down a few times. I'm going to go ahead and size it down just a little more. And then at this point, while it's still selected, I'm going to go ahead and make my way to object, find the pattern menu, and then click make. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And click done. Now notice as soon as I click done in the swatches panel, you will see that my flooring has already been saved as a new pattern. At this point, I can go ahead and select the floor plan and apply the flooring. If the flooring is too large, you may have to go back to the image size it down some more and repeat the process. Object, pattern, make. I'm going to go ahead and select the flooring again, apply the new pattern. As you can see, it'll keep sizing down. If you think that this flooring is not the ideal shape, you can go ahead and search for a new image and repeat the process. Once you have your floor plan completed, at this point you can go ahead and save it. You can do so by going to File, Save As. Make sure you save two copies, this is very important. Save a copy in Adobe Illustrator AI and then later save another copy for yourself as Adobe PDF. Find an area where you would like to save this and click Save. As soon as you have saved an Adobe Illustrator native file, you can go ahead and click on Adobe PDF. From here, a new option will show up where it'll ask you if you would like to save all of the artboards or if you would like to save a range of your artboards. Since this artboard right here is not necessary for you to save and export as a picture or as a PDF file, go ahead and click on the range and select only number two, which is the floor plan you were working on and click save. In the next video, I'm talking about the planogram and similar to the planogram, the goal here is to create a floor plan that is easy to navigate and will allow the customers to find, to compare and to choose products very efficiently. Thank you everyone. If you have a question, feel free to reach out.